Hello everybody and welcome to your 42nd chapter in your Java E7 tutorial series. In this tutorial we'll be talking about controlling concurrent access to entity data with locking. So let me describe to you a situation. Jerry wants to access his family savings account and withdraw $100. There's only $100 in the savings account and after Jerry is finished, there is no money in the savings account. Now imagine Jackie, Jerry's wife, wants to withdraw money from the savings account at the same time. The problem here is that on both screens, it shows that there's $100 in the savings account on both Jackie's and Jerry's um, website. But Jackie does not, does not know that Jerry had requested for the money right before she had. This can result in an error, which would make Jackie slightly pissed off, or a worse result of Jackie getting actually more money where there isn't any. This situation is called a concurrent access, when two parties are trying to access the same data. We can handle the situation in one of two ways, either an optimistic lock or a pessimistic lock. So optimistic locking is the action of checking if any data has been changed before making a transaction. A very efficient way to check if a database has changed values is to have a version attribute. A version attribute is unique to every database and changes every time a change in a database occurs. Let's say that the, a guy wanted to request money from this bank and a version, uh, a version is sent with the request or the response, sending that, to, don't worry, the transaction is being taken care of. So then behind the scenes, there's a transaction that happens and it changes the version. Once it comes back to check with it, it realizes that the versions do not match and a rollback transaction should happen. Basically, that's a fancy way of saying that a transaction does not occur. So next, let's take a look into pessimistic locking. So pessimistic locking takes this even further. When a transaction is requested from the database, the persistence provider creates a transaction that sets a long-term lock on the data until the transaction is completed, which prevents other transactions from modifying or deleting the data until the lock has ended. Pessimistic locking is a better strategy than optimistic locking when the underlying data is frequently accessed and modified by many transactions. You'll get less frustrated clients, but it may slow down the application since every transaction request has to wait for each to, com to be completed in front of it. To limit the slowdown, you can programmatically set a locking timeout, which waits for a certain amount of time before unlocking the data again. And that's it. That's all there is about controlling concurrent access to entity data with locking. I hope you understood how incredibly important it is to make sure that your concurrent access um, stays true to itself and you don't lose any data or make any data, which is we don't want that. So in the next uh, chapter, we will be talking about um, creating fetch plans with entity graphs. And I will see you in the next video.